What is Judgment Day? The day of God's final ultimate judgment on sinful society is known as Judgment Day. A number of passages in the Bible refer to the final judgment after death, when everyone will stand before God, and He will render final judgment on their lives. The Bible forewarns us about the Day of Judgment. Malachi 4, 1-6 Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. John the Baptist spoke of the need to flee from the coming wrath. Luke 3, 7, NIV John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Paul wrote to the unrepentant, Because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person in proportion to what they have done. Psalm 62, 12, KJV Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Romans 2, 5-6, NIV But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. Several times in the Bible, God passes judgment on individuals and nations. Isaiah 17.23, for example, is a series of judgments pronounced against Damascus, Egypt, Cush, Babylon, Arabia, Jerusalem, and Tyre. Isaiah 17. 1-6. A prophecy against Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroa will be deserted and left to flocks, which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites declares the Lord Almighty. In that day, the glory of Jacob will fade. The fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when reapers harvest the standing grain, gathering the grain in their arms, as when someone gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain, as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. These localized judgments serve to foreshadow the final judgment. God's judgment over the entire world is described in Isaiah 24. There is often a temporal judgment on sin in this life, but the final judgment will take place at the end of time. Revelation 19, 17 to 21 records a great war in which the adversaries of God are slain, and this may well be the image that most people think of when they think of Judgment Day.
However, this is only a temporal judgment on the people alive at the time of the great battle. The final judgment will encompass everyone who has ever lived and will consign people to their final destiny. Revelation 19, 17-21, NKJV Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. One of the most vivid descriptions of Judgment Day can be found in Revelation 20, 10-15. Revelation 20, 10-15, NIV. And the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulphur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. This verse reveals that God is the supreme and ultimate judge. Since Jesus indicates that it is the Son who will preside over the last judgment, we can deduce that it is He who currently occupies the throne. John 5, 16-30, NKJV For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill Him, because He had done these things on the Sabbath, but Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. 
For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Revelation 7, 17, NIV For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Additionally, it is clear that this evaluation is all-encompassing. This includes everyone who has ever passed away, both great and tiny, insignificant as well as significant. On the day of judgment, no one will be spared. On the day of judgment, people will be judged based on what they have done throughout their lives. In other words, they will be judged according to the works they have produced. One will not be judged based on the actions or inactions of others. Rather, each individual will be held solely accountable for his or her own deeds in the eyes of the law. Even if the evaluation is based on one's works, it is not a contest in which good deeds are compared against evil. Whether or not our names are written down in the Book of Life determines, in the end, whether or not we are allowed admittance into paradise or hell. Those who do not have their names written in the Book of Life will be tormented in the lake that burns with fire forever. In Revelation 21:27, it is stated once again that the only people who will be able to enter the new heaven and new earth are those whose names are written in the book of life of the Lamb. It would behove one to make sure that he or she is prepared for the final judgment day in advance in view of the huge stakes involved, eternal destiny. How is it possible for a person who has sinned, and we all have, to have his or her name inscribed in the book of life of the Lamb, and for that person to thereafter be able to appear before God in the last judgment and be found not guilty? How is it possible for a sinner to be justified in the eyes of a holy and righteous God while still escaping his wrath? The Bible provides us with an unmistakable response. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1 Everyone who puts their trust in Christ will have their sins forgiven, and their names will be recorded in the book that records the names of the righteous. They have nothing to worry about on the day of judgment, since Christ has already paid the price for their sins by bearing their punishment on the cross. Romans 8, 1 New King James Version There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Judgment Day will be the day of final salvation for those people who have trust in Christ, because on that day they will be saved from all of the negative effects that sin has had on them. Malachi 4, 2-3 NKJV but to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise, with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Hebrews 9, 27-28 NIV just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once 
to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Hebrews 9, 27-28 Just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him.